Hello, everybody. It's Philip Lee returning with another episode of Civil War Chat. Today is uh, October 20th, uh, 2021. And today I want to talk about uh, Washington and Lee University and uh, Robert E. Lee. And for those of you that are interested in keeping the Lee name and for that matter, the Washington name in the school, I'm going to have some information to discuss with you. But before we do that, I want to show you uh, my book, Confederacy at Flood Tide, The Confederacy at Flood Tide. This uh, tells the story from June of 1862 to December of 1862, when the Confederacy had its best chance to win its independence. And for those of you that have an affinity for the memory of the Confederacy, and uh, perhaps your ancestors, uh, I think I think you'll really enjoy this book. And uh, you can get it at Barnes and Noble, Amazon, any fine bookstore for twenty-eight dollars. If you want to buy an autographed copy, you can get it from me. Just send me an email. Phil, P-H-I-L underscore Lee, L-E-I-G-H at me, M-E dot com. And we'll make arrangements to do that. If you're here in the United States, I will deliver it to you for $31. Uh, and I'll cover the, that covers the delivery expense as well as the book. Okay, so today um, I want to uh, comment on Robert E. Lee and what's going on at Washington and Lee. There is an independent group of alumni that seems to be gaining some power here, uh, known as the General's Redoubt. And they just put out a letter, which I'm going to provide you a link below here at YouTube uh, to, uh, you can click on it. And uh, they are now working actively to get the president of the university, uh, William Dudley, removed. And they also are working actively to get uh, the rector of the Board of Trustees, Mike McAlvey, removed. Both of these guys uh, have no respect for Robert E. Lee, and I don't know where they stand on Washington, but I don't, I don't see much there either. They are completely uh, immersed in the um, identity politics and uh, have have a have a, have really a disdain for anything to do with Southern history, uh, unless it involves slavery. Uh, that they seem to seem to have a lot of respect for or a lot of interest in. Um, they have done a both of them have done a, a notably bad job of uh, providing uh, level-headed conversation about the differences among the alumni and for that matter, the students over the, these, these two men. And uh, the two men being Washington and Lee, not, not, not uh, Dudley and uh, McAlvey. They, they've done a uh, deliberately um, bad job of trying to be inclusive, even though they promote diversity, inclusion and equity they have really been the opposite of inclusive. They are only interested in one point of view, which is the, you know, the, the zeitgeist of the, of the current period, which is anybody that was connected with Confederacy is evil and has to be removed. But um, that goes on. I mean, you may be aware uh, just recently, uh, within the last couple of days, I think the city council in New York has voted to remove a seven foot statue of Thomas Jefferson. So it will no longer be in City Hall. They don't know where they're going to put it. But, uh, you know, if, you, if Charlottesville was any indication, here's what they may do. The, as you know, the Charlottesville statue of Robert E. Lee uh, was taken down, uh, I think maybe a year or two ago. And uh, now a, uh, a group has uh, bid $500,000, or I'm not sure what the bid is, but they have $500,000 to buy it. They want to buy it and melt it down and build a statue to uh, no doubt some, you know, somebody that was involved in civil rights or slavery, uh, probably uh, uh, that, but, you know, I, I don't really know which one they'll choose, but they are, that they have proposing to the city of Charlottesville that they'll pay apparently $500,000 for that statue so they can melt it down and then build a new statue. Uh, reflecting what they consider to be the, the current values of the day. This is really just a zeitgeist. Uh, I think that we're beginning to see some indication of this with the supply chain problems we're having. Our economy is in real problem. While we have surrendered to a totalitarian regime in Washington, 
that has that only wants power and increasingly grabs more and more power from us and then uh to to combat this uh, uh covid uh infection it, it really appears to me it's just a power grab to bring things into the central government and that's what the 3.5 trillion dollar which is now a five trillion dollar um budget plan is as well now why would i bring that up in the context of washington and lee and lee and and the name of washington and lee in the school i think that um both washington and robert e lee were um strongly opposed to centralization of power uh, clearly washington was because that's what the constitution was all about anybody that reads the constitution can see that the purpose of it was to limit the power of the uh, federal government to only those uh, items mentioned in the Constitution. So what I what I would uh, encourage you to do here is aside from getting this book, which is a good step to take, if you want to uh, get a good understanding of what the Confederacy was all about, is to uh, you know take a look at the link below which will take you to the general's readout where you can read the letter they've just recently sent out to their friends and uh, other alumni about what they want to do and how they propose to get william dudley the president of the school out of the picture replace him with somebody who has respect for traditional values and also get rid of uh, mike alvey so uh, that's uh, that's uh, my, my uh, episode for today and I want to thank you for watching. I'll be back in, a, you know, I do about three or four of these a week. So I'll be back soon and uh, we'll, we'll talk some more. Thanks again for watching.